Hi, I'm Martin and I'm going to build and deploy a React app to Google Cloud. You will see every step along the way so you can do the same and deploy your app. Anyone on the internet will be able to use your React app and you won't have to manage any servers. Let's get started. The first step is to create a React app. Then I'll create a server-side app using Express. That will serve the React app to users and provide an API so the app can get data from the server. Finally, I'll deploy the app to Google Cloud. First off, I need Node.js installed on my computer. I already do. Uh, but if you don't, go here to get it. Next, I will use Vite to create a default React project. You may prefer Next.js, Remix, or Gatsby instead. They all work. Vite will ask me for a project name, which framework to use, in this case React, and type of project. Now Vite created a starter project for me. I can cd to this directory it created, install all the dependencies, and run the app. The app is now served from my local machine over this URL. I will click and there is my React app. It displays a button. Uh, when I click it, count is incremented. Great, the React app is working. All right, uh, let's make a small change. Uh, I will open the app directory, then source, then app.tsx. Uh, this is TypeScript, but it would be a JavaScript file instead if you picked that language in the setup. I will edit this line here and save. Here we see that the app was rebuilt automatically. And here we see that it was reloaded in the browser. Excellent. We now have an environment for local development. Now let's build the app for deployment. I'll press uh, Control C to get back my command prompt. Then I'll run an npm run build to build the app for deployment. Here we see the four files that were created in the dist directory. Those are the files that we will deploy uh, to the cloud later on. All right, that was step one. Now we're ready for step two. We will create a server-side express app. It will do two things. One, it will send the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files from the dist directory to the user's browser so they can use the React app. And two, it will provide a server-side API that a React app can call. Any web app I have ever built has called an API to access the database or to run other server-side code. To create that server-side app, I'll go up one directory from the React app. Then I'll create a new uh, Node.js app. This server-side app will use the Express package for handling HTTP requests, so let's install that. Then I will create the file index.js. This server-side code will initialize Express so it can respond to incoming HTTP requests and handle JSON. Then I will tell Express to serve files from the dist directory as static files and not try to run them um, on the server. Remember, that directory contains the HTML, JavaScript, and CSS files for our React app. And then I'll add code to start the Express server so it listens to incoming HTTP requests. Let's add a server-side API to our React app uh, so it can call it and get the list of pirates. When the app hits this URL, this code will run on the server. First, it will extract the ID from the URL. Then it will look up the pirate that has that ID in our database. If no pirate was found, it will return a 404 error uh, to the React app. But if the pirate was found, that pirate record will be returned to the client as JSON.
Now in the finished app, uh, there's a get pirate function. We'll probably look up pirates in a database. But just to get off the ground quickly, let's hard code some pirates here. All right, the server-side code is done. Let's run it on my local machine. It's convenient to have an NPM script for this. So I'll go to package.json for the server-side app and enter this start command. We can use this ourselves to start the app. Uh, and once we deploy the app to the cloud, uh, Google will run that too. Let's run that start command. All right, uh, the server is running on this address on my local machine. Let's go there with the browser. Very nice. Our server-side app sent us the React files, so I'm now running that app in my browser. Uh, next, uh, let's take a look at that API. I will ask for pirate number three from the API. And there it is, in JSON format. The API is ready to be used by our React app. But let's move on to the last step. We're going to deploy this app to Google Cloud. First, let's create a project in Google Cloud for our app. I'll go to console.cloud.google.com. Then I'll pick my account here. Then I'll click through here. And here I can click this button to create a new project. If this is my first project on Google Cloud, I will also need to set up billing uh, we will use Cloud Run, which is serverless, so it has no fixed monthly cost. It will only charge us when our app is actively creating response to a user's HTTP request. What does that mean? Well, in this chart, uh, our container is listening for incoming HTTP requests for the entirety of the dark bar at the top. The blue bars are the requests. The green bars show what we're getting billed for. As you can see, when no blue request is being processed, there's a gap in the green billing bars. We aren't charged for that time. In other words, if our app gets 1,000 requests per day and each request takes one second to process, we will only be charged for 1,000 seconds of CPU time that day. We may even be charged for less than that if some requests overlap, like the blue bars in the graph. The first 200,000 CPU seconds each month are free with Cloud Run. There's also a free tier for memory usage. Uh, you can find all the details about the free tier and the cost uh, if you go above that free tier here on Cloud Run's pricing page. In practice, this free tier means that none of my development projects have cost me anything. It's only when I got serious production level traffic that I've had to actually pay for Cloud Run. Having said that, uh, for the rest of the steps in this guide to work, you'd need to create your billing account here. If this is your first Google Cloud project, you get a $300 credit. All right, now let's get ready to deploy the React and Express apps to Google Cloud. And that is done with the gcloud uh, command line tool. Here are the installation instructions. I've installed that tool already, so I will authenticate with gcloud auth login. This will give me access to my projects in Google Cloud. We see here that the G Cloud tool uh, tells us that we should set our current project. That's a good idea. Uh, looks like we need our project ID. Uh, we can find that here in the Cloud Console. Let's copy that. And then we'll use the G Cloud tool to set our current project. All right, let's deploy our app to Cloud Run. I'll enter gcloud run deploy, and that I would like the, what I would like the Cloud Run service to be called. Uh, I can have multiple Cloud Run services in my project. The gcloud tool will ask me where the source code is. It's in the current directory, so I will hit enter. Then it says API run Google APIs com is not enabled. 
to help with security, uh, Google requires us to turn on each API we want to use in our project. I will enter Y to enable Cloud Running on my project. Next, I get to decide where in the world this code will run. Any internet user will be able to access the app, but it will be slightly faster for users close to the location I pick. US uh, Central 1 sounds good to me, so I'll enter 29. Next, it asks me if I want to create an artifact registry in my project. That's where all the versions of my built app will be stored, making it easy to roll back to a previous version if needed. I accept by hitting Y. This question won't come up next time I deploy my app. Now it asks me about unauthenticated invocations to my app. Do I want my application to be reachable by anonymous users on the internet? I do, so I hit Y again. Next, it asks me if I want to turn on Cloud Build. Again, this question only comes up because it's the first time I deploy to this project. Uh, Cloud Build builds my application, actually a container with my application, from my source code in the cloud. That way I get consistent builds in a stable environment that does not depend on any individual developer's laptop. I'll hit Y again. And now it's building and deploying my app. This will take about three minutes, so I'll uh, refill my cup of tea. And I'm back. The deployment succeeded, and here it shows me the URL that our app is served from. Let's open that in a browser. Look at that, there's our React app. It is now on the public internet, ready for anyone to use. Let's also make sure that the server-side API works. I'll enter slash API slash pirate slash two after the base URL. And there is the pirate record. Both my client-side React app and the server-side API work from the cloud. We have created a React app, created a server-side Express app, and deployed them to Google Cloud for all the world to enjoy. Now, there are a few more things you'd need to make a good web app that's ready for customers. Your own domain name, a database, and user authentication. Let's start with the domain name. The URL that CloudRun generated for us is fine for development and testing, uh, but we'd probably want to use our domain name before we send real users to our app. Let's go to console.cloud.google.com and our project. I'll click the hamburger menu and scroll down to serverless and CloudRun. And here's our CloudRun service and any others we may create in the future. If I click the service, I get this page where I can view metrics, uh, set service level objectives, check the logs and so on. But we want integrations. I'll add an integration, pick custom domains. Here I'll enter my domain name and enable some other APIs. This will set up a load balancer that points from my domain name to my Cloud Run service. It will also create a certificate so people can use HTTPS when accessing my domain. And it will show me the DNS changes I will need to make for my domain with my uh, DNS hosting provider. I did all of this with my domain and this is what it looks like when it's done. There it is. By the way, uh, this load balancer will carry a fixed monthly cost of about $20. All right, that was uh, the domain name. Uh, what about the database? Well, there are plenty of choices in Google Cloud. If you prefer relational databases, you can activate Cloud SQL in your project. If you like NoSQL databases, you may want to use Firestore instead. By the way, Firestore is completely serverless, so it has no fixed monthly cost and it includes a free tier. Also, client-side code can connect to Firestore directly without a middle layer of server-side code, if you wish. Finally, many web applications need to authenticate their users. Let's talk about that. It takes a lot of work to build login functionality yourself. And it's kind of dangerous too. You might leave a security hole open. I prefer using Firebase authentication. 
It lets users log in with existing accounts from Google, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, and others. Or users can create a new account for your app with their own email and a password they pick. Firebase Authentication takes care of all of that for you. So there you have it, the three steps to publish your React app to the world using Google Cloud. In my opinion, the best way to build an app is to focus on your users and what they need. Don't waste your time on server maintenance, networking, scalability, and so on. Uh, Google knows how to run production web apps and can take care of all that for you. That way you can launch version 1.0 of your app sooner. And version 2.0 of your app will be able to handle thousands or maybe even millions of users because it runs on Google's infrastructure. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please enter them in the comments. Also, let me know if there are any other serverless topics you'd like to hear about in future episodes. I read every single comment. I can't wait to see what you build.